Well, spring has sprung. Oh, it sure has, like in a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting out the train. Absolutely. And Jane. the lawnmower, and I hope not the snowblower. Uh, probably next week, the snowblower, yeah. Yeah, probably. So uh, we've been sort of focusing our attention on stuff that we can do inside because the weather's foul and working on the part of the railroad that's inside the garage and other projects too. Uh, but I've been focusing principally on the giant canyon and the giant trestle that goes across the canyon simply because that's the missing part of the railroad. And so I want to continue working on this and uh, working on the outside of the railroad. Kind of split my time between the two. <laughs> well, that first yard work is always hard because we've had a lot of snow this year and now it's just took off growing because of spring. Yeah, there's a lot more to garden railroading than railroading. The first word is, is garden. Well, or find it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the initial lawn mowing is always kind of a hassle. Right. And this year, uh, part of the hassle is that uh, water, water everywhere. Yes, before we were too dry, now we've got flooding. Yeah, that last year we were in a drought, and this year we're up to our eyeballs in water. We're in a pickle, I guess. Yeah, this, now, this is uh, not supposed to be a lake right here, but it is a, a flood basin, so they've, flood, uh, they've intentionally flooded the park here. Uh, but some people are, by gosh, they're going to come to the park and enjoy the day, uh, water or no. Well, us and everybody else. <laughs> so we've had a record snowfall in the mountains this year and in the valleys, 900 inches in the mountains. Yeah, never anything like that. No. And now it's all got to come down out of the mountains. And uh, here it is. <laughs> there, yeah, there it comes. And they say this is only about the first 15% of it. The rest of it's still up in the mountains. Right. I'm thinking the end of May we'll see the peak or the flood or, yeah, get, build an ark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the meantime, I see people here in kayaks, and there were even some people here with fishing poles. I swear I saw a Conestoga wagon come over the hill. <laughs> And there was just people all over the place. That's why they call them a prairie schooner, I ah, guess. Ah, that's it. Go. Anyway, we decided to uh, walk the creek. It's always fun to go uh, on the hiking trail here through Sugar House. And even though the creek is rather high, as long as you stay away from the rushing water, it's perfectly safe. Right, they call this little area Hidden Hollow, but it's sure not hidden right now. I think everybody is walking this. Well, everybody wants to go out for a walk just to see the floodwaters. Right. Now, this is our favorite place to uh, walk through Hidden Hollow because this is actually an old abandoned railroad grade. That is, this is my favorite part right here. This is the Salt Lake and Eastern Narrow Gauge Railroad that was bought out by the Rio Grande. And I just try to envision what this looked like when C-16 locomotives were chugging up through here. It's just cool to just imagine that. And they've packed the soil down so tightly that nothing will grow where the railroad grade was, and that makes just an absolutely perfect hiking trail. Yes, yeah, the original rails to trails. They've put in a lovely plaque here along the grade to designate that it is a railroad grade, a little bit of history, and we've done a, a video on this, and so here's a link to the story of this railroad. It's really fascinating. This was the railroad to Park City, and check this out. This is probably the only remaining artifact of that railroad. It's one of the original uh, telegraph poles. Wow, well, it might be easily overlooked. Yeah, you'd, you'd just think it's a tree stump or something if you didn't know. But that's actually a telegraph pole. Well, that's cool. A lot of people don't even know about this little hidden park in here, but my mom really loved this because she grew up just a couple of blocks from here. And this was the original Sugar House Park. Oh, serious. And Sugar House Park was the penitentiary and the dump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they've kind of oh. switched that around, and now the original Sugar House Park is Hidden Hollow. Yes. 
It's amazing how fast this water is flowing and ice cold. And we still can't rule out another snowstorm. Absolutely not. So I just might create <laughs> my own, you know, as uh, flower petals. I, I prefer your snowstorm, <laughs> but gee, let's hope we don't have to dig out the snowblower again. Well, and that would be a mess. Unfortunately, this time of year, you have to have both the lawnmower and the snowblower standing by. Right, like they say, you're not in Utah unless you're running the furnace in the morning and the air conditioning in the afternoon. And the building, I had to finally take it in. I was planning to just leave it out, but the foundation isn't mounted yet. And so then the whole building was able to move in the wind. Oh, geez. And rather than run the risk of it blowing into the neighbor's yard. Well, or in the alleyway over here. Over, yeah, the, the yeah, the no man's land. Yeah. Um, better for it to just be inside. So right. it's inside, and I'm going to redo this, cement it, and then rig up a, an actual mount. This stuff has to all be cleaned up where it's come loose. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying to figure out what's caused it to come loose in some places and be solid as a rock in others. Right. And this is easy to figure out because it's just too thin. Right. But there's also some surface cracks here that let the water get in. Oh. And when I put, put waterproofing on, waterproofing isn't going to do any good if there's surface cracks. Mm. So I've got to figure out a way to deal with the cracking so that the water can't get inside. And then this whole section was all one batch of cement. And for some reason, that whole batch hmm. has gone bad. Weird. So I'm, I'm at a bit of a loss. But my my thinking and garden railroading is make it easy to repair. Yeah. Repair or replace. And this is easy to do both. So right. I'll just knock this whole list Well, off. and we can save Fix some it. of this stuff. Oh, this is golden. This is yeah. uh, like, you know, scrabbly stuff we can save for whatever. I mean, yeah, that stuff makes... <laughs> like this. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's exactly the way erosion works. It, so. <laughs> well, yes, this has been a lot large yeah. science uh, project. Yeah, yeah, look at that. So, no, this stuff's all going to get used. It just won't get used the way it's currently being used. No, that's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. Yes. But this should be pretty easy to clean up. And then the color, up here the color is fast. And again, it seems to be mostly a, a waterproofing issue. Hmm. But uh, I just take the color off where the color is coming off and redo it with actual concrete. And then from this point on, the color's going to be in the concrete. We yeah, I think looked that's at those concrete stains, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll still have to be colors added. But the basic, the basic color will just be. Whoops. Uh, uh. Uh, <laughs> the basic color will just be built in, which right. is a part of the cement. Right. Strength comes from the, the cement itself having strength mm -hmm. through thickness, especially when it's reinforced with either wire or cloth. Right. Uh, or cloth wire, as the case may be. <laughs> and then back here, wherever it's actually on the cinder blocks, uh, especially where an adhesive is used, that isn't going anywhere. Wow. Yeah, it looks pretty stable. And the color is, is good back there, too. Hmm. So Interesting. Where each section has been done differently, it does become sort of a a test laboratory. Right, I hope you took notes. <laughs> I did. <laughs> well, not so much notes as video. A video. So it's all explained in the video mm. as I'm going along. This is done this way, this is done this way. Right. It's a little tiny bit challenging getting it out from between the ties. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, ultimately there'll be stuff in between the ties because. This year I'm going to be balancing. Mm, it, yeah, I could see even if we had enough of this, which we don't, but I could see even using it as ballast. Yeah, in places I'll bet you could. Yeah. Because if there was a landslide, they would probably just leave that. Yep. Because that, that makes a fairly decent looking ballast. Sure does. But we, we, uh, we did some ballasting on the old version of the railroad. 
using clay kitty litter. Yes. And that actually worked really well. Right. You just have to mix it with some stuff similar to this mm -hmm. so that it's not quite so uniform. Mm -hmm. But that actually looks pretty neat. Yeah. As long as you get rid of the real Well, it looks pieces. authentic. I mean, yeah. you did have a landslide there and yeah, yeah. I think they uh, would have just cleared it off the tracks. That's, that's exactly what the, the actual railroad would look like would be. Mm -hmm. something, something like that. Something like that. Right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Limestone. Limestone. Mm-hmm. Failing cliffs. <laughs> uh, In places it's... Well, up there it went. There it goes. Yeah. That'll all have to be broken loose right. and then redone. A little small hammer. But just... It's just this one little section right That's here. just weird. Anyway, a major part of the spring cleanup is getting the railroad ready for summer operations. Well, one thing about a setup like this, it's a lot easier than getting down on all fours. Oh, I'm so happy we've chosen to put the railroad up on bench work like this. Now, we need to open the inner door here. This is like a once a year deal, but uh, the portal here easily removes. Uh huh. And then the inner door. So, this is the inner insulated door. And this comes in and out quite simply. And it's just got good insulation. We don't need it once the weather turns. And then further insulation. Wow. And at that point, we are now... I see daylight. It's the light at the end of the tunnel. The light at the end of the tunnel. Woo! So now we can just open that from outside. So all I have to do is put the portal back in place. Oh, wow. Well, look at that. And we're ready to go and run trains again. Look at that. This is trickier to put in than to take out. Oh, look at that. That simple. Wow. There it is. There it is. Now, I have never once cleaned this, ah. and uh, I'm curious to see what happens if I try driving the train out when it's the track is over a year old and it's never once been cleaned. Okay, well, let's see what let's, happens. Let's give that a try. Let's see. <laughs> So this is with track that's never once been cleaned ever, that's about a year out here. Wow. No keep alive in the Serious. locomotive. That's just it picking up its power through the tracks. Wonderful. On Yagas Creek, never been cleaned. And you can look at it and see that it's, it's got its- dirty. It's got its issues, but, uh, and, there's a, a track cleaning system that I've been planning to use. Uh, I've historically used things like Bright Boys and stuff, but I'm finding out that that's really ill-advised. So I will be cleaning this at some point using just mineral spirits. Oh, that'll work. The key is leave the rail as close to its original 
rolled rail as humanly mm -hmm. possible. Yeah. Just get the oxide off with some mineral spirits, and that's it. Wow. Because what we don't want to do is scratch it and create places for arcing and for right. dirt to build up. Right. A smooth and perfect to its original factory is best. Mm hmm But there it is. That's no neat. Been cleaned. Ha! And it seems to have been just fine. People told me you'll never be able to run DCC outdoors. There it is. DCC. There it is. The receiver for this is way inside there. Everything's going to be fine. The rails are good. I've never had an issue. And we ran this through standing water. Yes. And haven't had an issue. So. I think the, the prophets of doom that said you can't run DCC outside, admittedly we're fanatics about making sure there's a good wiring to the rail. Every piece of rail has a drop feed to a big heavy bus. And I think that's really the key to success. Yeah. That's what's really making this work. So the plan right now is to continue work on the big canyon and start patching the concrete work out on the railroad. Yes. And continue with some of that and, and repair the, the color out there. So I, I want to spend a little more of that time outside than inside just because we have the good weather. And then when we don't have the good weather, come in here and work on this. Which might be just even in July. You never know. It gets too hot, too. Yeah, it was 107. We had triple digits for like six weeks straight. Right. But there's just nothing like coming out here and running a train around in the cool of the evening. Oh, that is a blast. And we're all set to do that. Yes. Anyway, we hope that you're a subscriber. And if not, please click on the upcoming blue button to become a subscriber. Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with some fun. We'll see you then. We'll see ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.